So, so let's start. So I'm, I'm Oleg and I'm from Helsinki and uh, I work for Welltype today with Duncan. Duncan is a partner, so that's where I work. So I would talk about uh, writing the compiler, but it's not like a real compiler, it's just, just a uh, fun small thing I did for, for a game. So yeah, there's a cool game named Allure of the Stars, it's a roguelike, and many, including me, have no idea what happens there because everything is happening and a lot of happening and a lot of happening in random and to make random things you need random number generator and uh, we, want, we want fast random number generator so we looked on the internet what, what what algorithms are there, and there's one called split mix. So it's fast. It's also splittable. Splittable means that it's good for the functional programs. Uh, and you can read, read on the internet what, what it is mean. But we'll concentrate on, on fast things. So how the algorithm works is that uh, there's a seed which you increase by, by addition. So it's one operation, and then you have eight operations, XOR shift, multiply, XOR shift, multiply, and XOR shift once again to make it look random. And then you have magic numbers picked, picked in some other way, magic way, but the output will, will look random. So it's very simple. But the, the problem is that we want that game to run everywhere. And nowadays, to run everywhere means to run in web browser. Then web browsers brings us to JavaScript. So JavaScript is a great platform. You, well, it's everywhere, but it's it's terrible programming language. So, if you look carefully at that example, I have a typo there. But, but if you multiply two odd numbers in JavaScript, you get an even number back, and you, you, you may wonder what's happening. But it's so don't do any money calculation in JavaScript, please. Or at least not my money. <coughs> so how to fix that? Because uh, in this algorithm, we'll need to multiply. There's one multiply. And it's multiplying arbitrary big 32-bit numbers and want, want it to be precise. So we'll do the thing kids do in a school, long multiplication. But we'll be a bit smarter. We do it, we do it in. 16-bit digits, so we split 32 bits, bit numbers in half and multiply them uh, one by one, so four multiplications. But as we care only about 32 bits, then actually the last multiplication we don't need to do, so only three multiplications. It's a simple algorithm, you can, well, if you really try, you can fit it on, on one line, but so that's it. And uh, so, yes, split mix, and we have a multiply there. And we want to that this code to run as fast as possible. So what we will do, instead of defun, we will have def macro and expand everything. So just, just expand everything, it will work fast. And you get a lot of code. And you hope that it will run, run fast. So, if we look more carefully at, at the top, top and the bottom half are like almost the same. So if we look at the top, top half, we see that we that magic number is there assigned to a local variable, and then we take higher bits and lower bits out of that. But it's something you could do already. Like. You don't need to ask machine to do that. You can do it already before you ship the code. And, and there's, there's this feeling, should I optimize it by hand? And no. Let's rather write a compiler. So let's do it once and, and think that uh, so it works well, so we, we don't make any mistakes by manually tweaking our code. So uh, what we are interested in is a very, very tiny subset of closure. We have 
only numbers and few primitive operations. So XOR shift and multiply essentially. And yeah, shift, yeah. So what we do, we just add a bit slice of magic. And when I run a benchmark, it run 10% faster on, on Lumo. So because random numbers are in a hot, hot loop, then you want that bit to be fast. So you use a bit of magic there. And so what's, what, what is that magic? Well, it's a very simple compiler pipeline. We take a closure form in, convert it to some internal representation, and on the way back, we convert it back to something which looks like closure. Uh, we fix our multiplication, so it produces correct results. Uh, and we optimize so that to make it run faster. Uh, about internal representation, uh, uh, well, someone might disagree, but I think that closure surface syntax is very complicated to work directly with. It's like impossible. Every time I write some macro, I, I'm, why, why, why there are those? Well, my feeling is there are not enough parentheses, so, so it would be easier if there were, for example, in let. So I just represent it as a nested vectors with a key tag at the front. I'm, I'm not closure programmer by day, so, but I think that's common, common idiom. And we kind of get that code will look like easy to work with data. But problem with with programming languages is that we have local variables. So local is the key here. That we, if we have x, y, or a, b, it really doesn't care. We shouldn't care. So what we, what I used is the, the Brown indices. So no names, no problems. Uh, but I, I have to admit that getting them right is is difficult. So if you want to pursue it writing your own compiler, go out there and find some library to do those bindings for you. So you don't need to make the same mistakes as everyone makes first time and then try to fix them. And uh, even if we don't have names in our internal representation, we can still have them there as a metadata. And I have to admit that this is a very cool feature of Clojure, that you just add metadata to your stuff, which most of your program doesn't care, it just passes it. Uh, it's there attached, but when you throw an error, then you can use names and non, non some nonsense numbers, which doesn't make any sense. So metadata is cool. Uh, okay, so the most interesting part, hopefully, is optimization. So we did a bit of setup. <laughs> We have internal representation, which is easy to work with. So let's see what we want to do. So that was our code snippet with a, with a problem. So we, we have a UV variable. We bind the constant value to it. And then we immediately use that, uh, that binding uh, in other bindings. So we could do some, some very clever stuff. but. Let's keep it very, very super simple. So we'll have a s simple rewrite rule. So we won't look anywhere outside. We will take, take an, an, uh, an, a node in a tree of, of our code. And if, if, if our rule matches to it, then we will perform the rewrite and until un continue until nothing matches. So the, the most powerful optimization and one we will need is to inline lead binding. So if we have a variable and we bounce on expression and then there's body of the lead that what we do, we just push the expression into the body. So, and, and only that, we don't do anything else in that optimization. So if we have x1, y2, and plus x, y, then we get just plus one, two. We don't, in this step, we don't do anything else. Simple rewrite and local one. We don't need to look anywhere else. 
And because we don't really use names in our internal representation, it's actually quite, quite direct to implement. Uh, so there's a quirk, however, so if we have Fibonacci 100, it might be expensive to compute, so, and we use it twice. Then we don't, don't want to inline it, maybe. But if, if there's already a value, it's, someone was so silly to calculate it using some method, then, then we, we can inline it. So we, there is some heuristics in optimizations, and optimizations are kind of an art, but uh, when, when your language is small and simple, then optimization heuristics are small and simple. So keeping things simple makes your life easy. Uh, but now, now a moment I, I'll give you to think what, when this is the right thing to do. Okay, don't think too hard. So consider something which might look, someone might write that in, in closure programs. So we have foo, assign do foo for it, and bar and do bar, and then we have do cukes. So if we do the inlining that do bar and do foo go into wrong order, and do cooks disappears completely because it's, it binding is not used at all. So, so inline, inlining is not correct thing to do in arbitrary closure program, but in my small tiny subset of closure is correct because there are no side effects, so your language should not have side effects, and and you don't really care about the order of execution that much, so you can rearrange stuff. So you can think what, what language I, I have in mind which do exactly or works exactly like that. But yeah, but for full clo closure you cannot do that. Only for small subsets. And the next next optimization is constant folding. That that the one you probably all have in mind when uh, when thinking about about optimization. So if there's something which you can evaluate, you evaluate it at, at, at compile time. So we got stuck with, with plus one, two, so we just evaluate it. It's, it's, this is very simple. So, and once again, when constant folding is a valid rewrite, lights go off, hmm, what I did. <coughs> well, that was a trick question. So it, it depends on your primitives in your language. In, in my language, all primitives are can be evaluated and at, at compile time. But if you actually have a primitive which prints something at, at the console, you probably want to do it at run time and not at compile time. So it depends. But uh, And again, it's a bit tricky. Even if you have some computation which looks like you could perform it at compile time, okay. uh, do you want to, to make actually do it at compile time or do you want it make it startup or for your application or at first use. So it, it's tricky and there's no right answer. It depends on your domain. So if you're writing a language for, for some special domain, you know be best what's, what's, what's to do. But, and as I said, in implementing these optimizations in this way is not difficult. So the constant fault is literally this one. So four lines of code. We check that it's not that the the node is not of any special type and that, that all arguments are, are constants and then we evaluate it. It's like I yeah. And there's enough parenthesis in this one. I like it. So th this was the mess we had, and only two optimizations. Boom, I don't need to scale the font anymore, it feels on the slide. And, and you can see that, that it's very hard to find anything you could compute or, or do to make it, make it feel faster. What, what we can do is to make it look prettier, so there are nested LEDs, and we can pu pull the inner LED to, to, the, to the out. 
and that's a very, very old optimization. Older than me, no, I'm not so young, but still old. So with these three optimizations, we get a very direct code, uh, six intermediate values, and, uh, and the final computation to, to make that the next step in, in, in random numbers. Uh, so to conclude, implementing small domain-specific languages is, is very funny. You should try it. And this is a language, what, well, it's used in production. Well, to make that library go fast. So it's, it's not even a, a joke. And, and you don't need to think about numerics. You, you can compile, optimize your HTTP routing. You might have some authorization rules which do complicated stuff. You have CS scripts. I don't want to write bash by hand. You might have UI toolkit. So a lot of things. You just have to think that like ordinary programs take data in and push data out, so compilers take code in and push code out. And code is data, so there's really no difference. It's that simple. Thank you. So we have some time for questions. There's one in the back. Hi. So you said this was in production. Uh, where exactly? Is it like in an open source library or in-house somewhere? So the, uh, I'm a author slash maintainer of split mix library in Haskell, and when you when you use it with, uh, with JavaScript compiler, it's, there is a flag that you could use that optimized path with this compiled, with kind of version of this. this. So you, you don't run compiler in production, but it's code produced, but that compiler is run in production. If you play those games. So if you find some other talk boring, then, then you can go to the website and click play me in the browser. It's very nice. 